In order to replace the iron gear with wear-resistant copper material, Pakistan uses copper water for glue casting. Although they do not have a decent processing equipment, the finished products can be completely consistent. This small manufacturing workshop in Peshawar, the master first needs to use a liquefier to preheat the sand. The main purpose is to fully mix it with the waste oil and make the sand for injection molding have a certain viscosity. The mold without molding will also crack and collapse. In order to re-engraving the damaged gear, tape is needed to fit the edges to prevent the deformed pits from affecting the molding of the mold. Then sprinkle a layer of fractal sand on the surface. When the sand is filled into the sandbox, it will not adhere to the gear surface. Then it is compacted by gravity. There will be no hollow bones. After the master skillfully smooths the surface, the mold is simply completed halfway. The interior still needs to be glued. The gears in the station need to be separated from the mold. The accuracy of the teeth is definitely not up to the requirements of use. In order to reserve space for subsequent processing, Fu had to change the mold into a standard round shape. That is, to remove the teeth of the mold. After the master carefully adjusted it with an iron sheet, the inner wall of the mold needed to be heated at high temperature to achieve the purpose of solidifying the mold. While waiting for the mold sand to harden, Fu also needed to fix their heating furnace to avoid the temperature being too high and causing deviation. Their small workshops and small melting furnaces generally use heavy oil as heating fuel. Not only does the heating speed increase quickly, but the value added of the ancient fan can also keep the temperature unchanged. Since they did not recycle waste copper, they also needed to return this copper-clad iron turbine to the furnace for remanufacturing. It is definitely not usable to melt it directly. In order to separate the copper and iron of the turbine, Fu first had to preheat it with the help of the temperature of the furnace. This way, the turbine can be annealed to reduce the overall hardness of the turbine. After the turbine is simply heated for half an hour, the wolf head needs to be used to continuously knock the copper clad so that the copper and iron of the turbine can be layered. After the separation is completed, the copper block is thrown into the furnace and the copper material of the glue column is obtained. At this time, when the ancient fan is fully powered, the block quickly melts into copper water and then pours it into the mold. After waiting for five hours of cooling, the master needs to clean it carefully to prevent sand from getting stuck in the gap of the window claw plate. In order to ensure that the data of the replica gear is completely consistent, the master also needs to use a caliper to measure the inner diameter to prevent inconsistent data from causing the same gear to be unusable. After confirming that it is correct, the surface will be cut. Of course, this will affect the thickness of the fur piece. In the case that the mold is not sealed, the thickness of the column is much greater than that of the iron gear. With the master's very skilled cutting, the entire light section has a qualitative improvement because the entire, the inner wall is very. The master also needs to use a grinding wheel to polish it. In this way, the edge of the hole can be shaped and the original tooth shape of the gear can be restored. The gear glued with copper water has been produced. What do you think of the skills of the Pakistani master?